Right now, some 230 people are suing Hertz Rental Car. But it's not for faulty cars. It's because Hertz filed theft reports, which caused innocent customers to be arrested, prosecuted, and even put in jail. Today, we're talking about why there might also be a warrant out for your arrest if you've ever rented a Hertz car. Mexico, a relaxing family vacation. That's what Drew Caesar had in mind last winter. But at the airport, a customs official asked him, are you aware you have a warrant out for your arrest in Georgia? For a split second, Drew thought the officer was joking. It turns out that Hertz had filed a theft report for allegedly stealing a rental car in Georgia. There were just two problems with Hertz's accusation. First, Drew is from Colorado. He's never even been to Georgia. But in addition, he had never even rented a car from Hertz. But he was arrested anyway, jailed for a day, and held in custody until his lawyers proved he wasn't in Georgia on the dates that Hertz said he was. Prosecutors dismissed the warrant, but the damage and traumatic experience was already done. Charles Doucette is a healthcare consultant from New Hampshire. He had a squeaky clean record, zero criminal history, never been arrested until a few weeks ago. He was returning home from a Caribbean cruise. When a ship docked in Florida, U.S. custom officials cuffed him on board the ship and took him to jail. The reason? Well, back in November 2020, he rented a Hertz car for business purposes in Salt Lake City. He extended the rental several times to March. But in March, Hertz filed a theft report for the car. Charles was in Arizona when the police stopped him and towed the car. Charles thought it was just a clerical mistake, especially since Hertz billed him almost $4,000 for the full renter that same day. He thought that was the end of it. What Charles didn't know was that later an Arizona court issued a warrant for his arrest. This is what led to his arrest on a cruise ship recently. He spent two weeks in a Florida jail before he was flown to Arizona in handcuffs. He was released later that day. Charles still has felony charges against him from Hertz at the moment. But there are still other accounts. One customer was jailed from Oklahoma City city for a month. Well, while she waited extradition to Terrence County in Texas, she had to stay in jail. This was a paid for Hertz rental, which she had extended multiple times. It has been paid in full. Yet Hertz reported the car stolen and had her arrested on New Year's Eve. But it gets worse. One man, who Hertz accused of theft, was able to prove his Hertz rental agreement and also bank statements that proved that Hertz charged his debit card. Yet throughout the trial, Hertz maintained the company had no record at all of the customer even renting the car. There aren't just a few bizarre, isolated cases. Right now, there are some 230 plaintiffs who are asking for more than half a billion dollars in combined damages and fines. According to different court documents, this group of plaintiffs has spent a total of 2,742 days in jail because of false arrests by Hertz. But that's not all. There are actually over 20,000 different people who were affected by these false arrests. Some estimate there were over 50,000 and counting. So really, these 230 cases are just the tip of the the iceberg. You can bet Hertz wants to keep this confidential. They don't want anybody to know the number of thefts that they've filed. But recently, a Delaware bankruptcy court judge ordered Hertz to publicly release the information. Hertz said they get more than 25 million rental transactions per year. Of those, about 0.014% get reported to authorities after exhaustive attempts to reach the customer. This equates to about 3,500 theft reports every year. Attorneys for the customers believe the real number is closer to 8,000. It's unknown how many of these are due to errors as opposed to legitimate thefts. But one thing is certain, there are many customers with harrowing stories. These lawsuits bring to light Hertz's response to missing inventory. Hertz has a habit of filing theft reports and accusing customers of stealing their cars instead of conducting internal investigations to locate late or missing vehicles. If you want to understand how this is even possible in this day and age, you have to rewind a couple of years back to May 2020. That was the year Hertz filed for bankruptcy. This was around the time the pandemic really started to take its toll on the travel industry. Hertz was no exception. I mean, who needs to rent a car when there's lockdown and social isolation and you have few reasons to leave your house? Anyway, by May 2020, the company was in financial trouble. We're talking $17 billion in debt. So they made the decision to lay off thousands of employees. But then another problem ensued. With a smaller staff, they had a harder time keeping track of their vehicles. So they came up with a quick and easy solution. File a theft report and let the police deal with it. And this time, said story has been repeating itself over and over again. But with different people. Innocent customer rents a car from Hertz. Complications arise when the customer extends his rental or delays in returning the car. Instead of updating their records or trying to locate the car, Hertz filed reports with the authorities alleging the customer stole the car. Customer gets arrested in jail. Later, when facts get revealed in court, the case gets dismissed. But it's not just that. Actually, allegations of false theft reports have been an issue with Hertz for the past seven years. It's something Hertz has known about all this time, has tried to keep it secret, and yet continues to do it. Let's rewind to 2017. 
team during a lawsuit against Hertz. The company's national vehicle control supervisor took the stand. Reportedly, he admitted during cross-examination that the police reports that Hertz files don't always contain accurate payment information or customer contact information. He also reported he admitted that Hertz doesn't amend or correct reports, that it knows erroneous, false, and misleading. But Hertz tried to justify its action. The company said on record that even when it learns of errors, they didn't correct it because they didn't want to hurt their relationship with the police. In other words, the company feared that the police would treat them like the boy who cried wolf. Court records show some police reportedly saying that they wouldn't take new reports from the company. One example is the Hertz location at the Louisville and Indianapolis airports, which filed multiple theft reports. Later, the alleged stolen cars ended up being found on Hertz's own lots. Needless to say, some local police stopped taking them seriously. Now, Hertz alleges that many of the customers involved in these lawsuits failed to return their cars for weeks past their due date. Hertz claims they tried multiple times to reach these customers and that they only filed theft reports when they weren't able to establish communication with the customers. With these critical legal and financial woes, you'd expect Hertz to be six feet under by now, but they're not far from it. Believe it or not, last summer, Hertz emerged from bankruptcy, but not without consequences. They had to furlough just around 20,000 employees. Before the pandemic, Hertz had a global fleet of 650,000 vehicles. To pay off all that accumulated debt, they sold off more than 200,000 cars, which is about one-third of its inventory. All of Hertz's debt wasn't a consequence of the pandemic, though. A big chunk of it came from bidding wars, talking about two points. $3 billion to be exact. Thing is, Hertz was involved in a bidding war with Avis. Both wanted to buy Dollar and Thrifty, and Hertz outbid Avis and ended up showing $2.3 billion to acquire these companies. At the time, some analysts believed they paid too much. Well, Hertz is definitely suffering the consequences now. Today, the company has been feeling pressure and heat due to employee shortage and lack of computer chips, which is impacting their inventory. That extra $2 billion debt they acquired didn't make things any easier. Though they pulled out of bankruptcy, customers haven't been welcoming Hertz back so much. Many customers today complain of poor customer service. Others complain that they got overcharged. Some say they reserved a car only to find out that none are available. If you go to any social media and search for Hertz, you can easily find loads of complaints. And did you know that some car rental prices at Hertz increased by a massive 147% compared to pre-pandemic levels? Many customers also complain about Hertz issuing extremely last-minute cancellations and how it's been difficult to receive refunds. If you still feel comfortable renting a Hertz car in the future, just be aware of one other thing. Hertz admits it has cameras installed the one out of every eight rental cars in the U.S. These cameras are built into Hertz's never lost dashboard assistant, and they've had this since 2014. Hertz claims these cameras are never turned on because they lack the bandwidth to use the cameras. That sounds all good, except there's no proof or data to confirm they aren't spying on you. Here's the thing. Installing a camera in a rental car isn't illegal, regardless of whether you think it should or shouldn't be. As long as the rental car company discloses the fact, then this isn't against the law. But I can bet you most people value their privacy and don't like to be spied on or recorded. Anyway, just something to consider next time you get in a Hertz rental car. Hertz has been trying to fix its damaged reputation. Not long ago, Hertz announced they ordered 100,000 Teslas. The order cost them over $4.2 billion. This was the largest single EV purchase in the U.S. to date. Hertz started renting out Tesla Model Ys and Model 3s at the Hertz airport locations with plans to expand their offering across U.S. and Europe locations by the end of the year. Last October, Hertz announced a 39% profit margin for its third quarter. This was the company's highest profit margin since 2015, so things appear to be getting better. Recently, they are authorized up to $2 billion in stock buybacks. But not everybody's happy about the decision, especially U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren. She's been one of the heaviest critics. Evidently, days before Hertz filed for bankruptcy in 2020, the company paid out more than $16 million in bonuses to their top executives and senior managers. There's the thing. Hertz has roots in U.S. history. It was founded more than 100 years ago back in 1918. A Chicago man by the name of Walter L. Jacobs started renting out Ford Model T cars. Within five years, he expanded his fleet to 600 cars, generating a million bucks. Then a man named John D. Hertz bought the business, renamed it Hertz Drive Yourself System. Three years later, he sold the rental company to GM. Then he bought it back from GM 27 years later. I guess he couldn't make up his mind. Today, Hertz operates about 12,000 corporate franchise locations domestically and internationally. They're one of the largest car companies by sales worldwide, by locations, and
and fleet size. Hertz also owns other rental brands like Thrifty Car Rental, Dollar Rent a Car, and Firefly Car Rental. Makes you wonder how shady practices will set the precedent for their other rental brands too. Well, if you are for or against Hertz, there's one thing for sure. Thousands of people are being accused and sometimes arrested in airports, in their driveways, and even on cruise ships. Sadly, this is nowhere near over. I'm sure by now you're wondering when was the last time you rented from Hertz, or if you were late in returning a rental car, or if the bill is paid in full. Hopefully this video won't get you nervous about what Hertz might or might not have filed against you. But now you tell me, have you rented a car from Hertz within the last seven years? Did you know anybody who got accused by Hertz or got thrown in jail by them? Please share your story or experience by commenting below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.